Well, good evening and welcome back to another fishing adventure. Today we're actually gonna start off the squid season. It's just creeping into September now. And this is when I tend to swap my lures for a bit of squid fishing. Now don't get me wrong, I'll stick to the bass fishing as much as possible. But when the squid really do come on the chew and start pulling into the harbors, that's when I like to get out, get myself some nice autumn goodies. Now squid fishing is pretty simple, anyone can do it. You do not have to be any type of professional. You can be a beginner, you can be a child, you can be anyone and it's really simple to do. First of all you need a fishing rod. I recommend a spinning rod, nothing too heavy. If you're throwing squid jigs all night, you don't want something that's gonna overpower your arms. Also really good for bite detection. And then all you need is a box of squid jigs. Now I've got a really good amount, but that doesn't mean you need a good amount. It's nice to have a range of colors, rattlers, silent, small or large, just a mix up. Oh, and I have some baiting needles in there. And I like to just creep around at night, finding places where there's natural light looking into the water, also where there's bait fish congregating, and then just flick some jigs in and around the margins. Right on the bottom usually, is the place where I usually catch them. But if there are loads around, just like mackerel, you'll catch them at any depth. I'm gonna give you a few ideas and some little essentials that I actually know I need to take out to go jigging and enjoy my night. The jigs I use, the rigs I use, the lights I use, what I look for, like bait fish on the top of the surface under a light, and also some techniques. Very easy, very simple really just putting the fun back into fishing, getting yourself a nice bit of food, a nice chew, and just enjoy that fishing with your friends. Because squid fishing is not about fishing on your own, it's about a few of you on a pier, chucking it down, having a laugh, and then just pulling them in. Because it can be really exciting fishing once you get in them and once you start finding them. You can catch like five, 10 in the night, maybe 20. You know, it can really become that good. So, these are what I'm gonna use, and we'll go from here. Let's go. First of all, I like to have a really good selection. In here, I've got big jigs, really small jigs, rattling jigs, totally silent cheapies, a range of absolutely everything. And what I like to do is mix it up. Make sure that you're giving yourself every opportunity to catch a squid because some nights, they will only feed on something like that color. Just for example, not saying that in particular color, but something out of the ordinary. They might just be picking up something like so. So it's always nice to kind of have something a little bit different that does something a little bit different to what you're doing. Now I tend to like the color orange, red, or yellow. As you can probably see in here, everything is kind of that color. The reason I like these particular colors and patterns is just preference. I tend to find that the squid really turn onto these, especially mid-season at the start of the season, onto these colors, fish close to the bottom or up top, and the squid just go berserk. And I've got many different colors and patterns, as you can see, that one's got lines on it. That one's just a straight orange. This one's just like a yellow with orange. This one actually changes color. Chameleon, rare as rocking horse caca. But then some general heavier ones. If it's a windy night, I like to have them right on the bottom. And this one's got an actual weight on the top, like a jig head kind of weight that you would use maybe when you're lure fishing. So get it right down at the bottom. So it's really good to, you know, have a variation of colors and sizes, ones that rattle, some that have different rattles, and just, you know, some random ones to mix it up. Also got some purpley kind of ones here as well. And that's my squid jig selection. Nothing really to it too much. Just keeping with the same color, which I'm confident with. But that's really up to you what you use. They're just preference of mine. Now these are cuttlefish. They don't look like a squid. They've got a wider backbone to them. A nice, big, ugly looking head. Alien-like creatures. 
These are really tasty, really lovely. Cook them a little bit differently to squid, but these can be absolute fantastic eating. And if you're not much of an eater, a nice big conga bait. They have crazy colors on them. They change color. Um, when they're homing in on prey, they kind of change to the color of their surroundings. Stay close to the bottom and just mooch around. They swim like so. Say that is the floor. They just move around very slowly like that and then just come up and in here they've got a crazy kind of beak and these big legs that they feel around like so and then grab the lures. Now a lot of times you might actually have one of these on and then it will pop off. Squid tend to grab it on the end, pull off and get stuck on the squid jig. Whereas these will grab your squid jig maybe on the back of the neck like they would with a live bait and just pick at it and then drop it, pick at it and then drop it. So if you do tend to get these kind of feelings where it's picking up and leaving it, when you originally feel the bite, give your rod a little sharp yank, bang, bang, and just see if you can get a connection onto the body. And then hopefully you bring one of these babies in and you've got yourself a nice little meal. Part of the cephalopod family again, but this is a cuttlefish and they do grow quite big as well. Now the rig I'm using is a two jig rig. One jig, two jig. I tend to use the double jig method all the time. Now, there's no harm in fishing with just one, but I like to fish two. The reason I do this is because I can put a bigger one on the bottom and a smaller one, like so, above. Now, if the squid are hitting this most of the time, you go to two smalls. If it starts hitting this one, I'll go to two bigs. I always like to start my session with a smaller one and a bigger one at the bottom. And the rig consists of just two small bits of line. Basically, I've just tied them together using a fancy little knot, which I'll show you shortly. Putting two pieces of line together at the same length, pushing them, to, pushing them both towards each other at a point to form a loop, and then take the two pieces of line situated on the top through the loop three or four times, and then pull both ends and this causes two bits of line to be tied together and all of this is doing is binding two bits of line together where you can tie a jig with a small little clip and it's really good to have a clip on each side just so you can actually swap the jigs over nice and quick no knots needed a quick changeover put the other one in the box and then you're back out there nice and easy very simple very effective rig but the good thing about this rig is you do not have to fish two jigs if you find that you're catching them on one or someone next to you is catching them on just one you can just unclip maybe the top lure so one's always at the bottom and then you can fish one jig very simple very easy an absolutely amazing rig that's caught me loads of squid loads of double ups very strong very easy to use a very easy to cast can't go wrong now compared to a cuttlefish squid look rather different they do not have that fat roundish like body but more of a slender thin body they also have wings on the top of their hood with two legs that hang out and grab their prey from afar much different and very easy to tell the difference they taste amazing they fight really well and these ones here are actually very small they can grow 10 times the size of this but all of them taste the same Bloody lovely, I would say, here in Jersey. But this just gives you a different perspective from a cuttlefish to a squid. So you can tell the difference when you're out and about. You know what you're taking home and you know what you're cooking. Right, let's get into it. My rig is ready to go on my rod. Just using that small little clip. Got these on just when I'm in the car. They don't get stuck anywhere. I take them off and let's give them a little cast. Now I tend to like to let all my line out. Obviously if it's windy and your line is bowing, go tight on it and just let it slowly go down. Let some line off, flick the bear alarm over and they will slowly sink off. And then once your line goes from a bow and goes straight, you know that you're tight on your jigs again. 
Now, obviously, if it is too windy, you can use like a heavier one, like I suggested before, that it's got like the weighted front. It doesn't have to be something like that. It could be like a 3.5 um, size squid jig, nice and big, nice and weighted. But I want my lures to sink really slowly into the bottom. Now, squid will take you either on the drop while you're moving it up and down, while it's situated on the bottom. They're very inquisitive creatures. And just like their good old cousins, the cuttlefish, they will come up and follow something and look at it and more than likely they will take a swipe at it. So I'm fishing very slow. I see so many people fishing so fast. For every one of my cast, they've had like three or four. Be as slow as you can without getting it stuck on the bottom. Obviously that is gonna happen, especially if you are a beginner. You will tend to get stuck on the bottom, but once you get a feel and you know the feeling of the jigs with your rod, again, don't use a heavy rod, use kind of spinning rods doesn't have to be this exact one that I've got here it could be any one you want a spinning rod but mine's about 8 to 35 grams just to give you that kind of thinking in your head to the weight of rod I'm using and I'm just slowly bringing it in as you can probably see I'm not even reeling half the time and just jigging it very slowly but as I say there are so many different ways that a squid can take your line or take your jig you know it doesn't have to be really slow but that's just something that i enjoy doing nice and slow letting it go to the bottom sometimes they hit you on the drop most of the time they're on the bottom good fun now i caught these two guys the other night absolutely splendid eating beautifully marked cuttlefish now on this particular occasion i wasn't catching anything I was using a two jig rig, one small, one large. I had mixed it up all night and caught absolutely zilch. Then I turned to a little contraption that I bought last year, a UV torch. And what this little baby does is light up the jigs, glows them up. So when they're down in the dark depths, they have some kind of added attraction. Now I'm not saying you need one and you don't need a UV one. A normal head torch will do it but it's really nice to have something different in your arsenal. Something that might be the game changer and something that might help you along the way. Something I like to use. Glow them up, chuck them out, let them sit on the bottom and see if you can get into something that way because it's always good to mix it up. Also, I sometimes use a light. I've just bought a light from one of my general building stores. It costs like 25, 30 quid. I can charge it up at the wall in the day and at night I can tie it to the pontoon or tie it by a rope and lower it down a wall. Now you don't need a light everywhere. If you're fishing a harbour that has a light that shines down onto the water, you're totally fine. You don't need to add anything else. The bait fish will be attracted to this light and they'll sit just under the water layer. And when the squid are about, they will hang low in the darker areas, in the shadows pouncing on these bait fish. And when I've gutted so many squid over my time, they're full of little pollock, full of little sand smelt, full of anything small. They're predators with big eyes and they're always on the attack and always on the chew. So the only time I would use a light is somewhere where there isn't a light, if that makes sense. Giving you that added attraction. So you don't need a light all the time, but I like to suspend one where there isn't light to bring the fish in and then also bring this squid in.